yo, 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 what it do, everybody? It's your man Dre, aka Dre on Wheels. Y'all already know what it is, man. It's Friday. Welcome back, you guys, to the 11:30 podcast. Talk pro wrestling with Goody. Everybody going out there, man. Yo, we made it back here another week, man. I appreciate everyone tuning in this week here on uh, YouTube. Everyone who's watching on YouTube, everyone who's listening on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, the audio side, appreciate it so, so much. But if you're new to the podcast, man, like everyone is almost each and every week, man, definitely hit that subscribe button and like it, leave a comment and do all that great stuff. And uh, don't forget to follow the 1130 Podcast on all social media platforms. But you guys, like I said, man, it's time to talk some pro wrestling. I'm back at it, man. Yo, I got a dope guest, man. Dope guest that's going to be joining me here on the podcast. My guy is getting back in the ring, man. We're going to be chopping it up about, about that, man. And also, he's a dad, and I'm a newly dad, so we're going to be chopping it up about, you know, some dad stuff and, you know, wrestling. Of course, man. It's talk pro wrestling. Yes, one-third of the commission, you know, not including myself, but yes, my guy, Buzzing with Marlo. He's the host of Buzzing with Marlo. Warren Marlo is going to be joining me here on the podcast this week, you guys. But before we get into the every before we get into everything and talk about everything, make sure you follow the 1130 podcast on all social media platforms. But you guys, we ain't gonna waste no more time. We're gonna get into it. We're gonna bring in my bro, what up? my buddy. Warren what Marlo, up? What up, big dog? What up? You, hey, How you man, doing? How you I doing? Love it. I love the intro. Like always, like always. I appreciate it. I appreciate it a lot, man. Thank you for coming on the show. And yo, we Absolutely. just we was just talking Wednesday on Commission Talk with Blackheart and also Eric the Joker. Shout out those guys, man. But yes, my guy Warren Marlow is about to be stepping back in the ring in a couple of weeks, man. For real. So he on talk pro wrestling. We're gonna be chatting it up about that. And also some trending topics. Y'all can see those around. right there. That's when you know you're fully <laughs> oh, back man. in. That's when yeah. you know oh. you are officially back in. <laughs> oh, man. For real. A little bit more, man. You look like Cody after that, man. <laughs> oh, and man. The craziest yeah. thing, I mean, it was just like a shoulder tackle. So, oh. it's just, I'm getting back in. I mean, those bumps, you know, it's funny. It's supposedly a yeah. fake sport, right, guys? This is a fake sport. You know? Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah, man, I'm definitely excited. Um. Like we've talked about it plenty of times and I remember that's how me and you connected at first and I never thought I could do it again. And for it to what it is now, it's just a blessing. Um, this is me to go out on my own terms. This is not me to be like, oh, you want to rewrite history? No, this is me to go out on my terms. I said I wanted to retire at 30 if I didn't go big or anything. I retired at 28 because I couldn't do it anymore. My neck, all that. Needless to say, got a little cocky, kept kept work rehabbing and stuff, and like hanging out with all y'all, and you know me giving points of views on wrestling, and you know just got more connected into it. And then I was like, you know, all right, I can do this. Like I can do this and not be hurt in the ring, whatever. And then obviously. That one freaking episode had to happen and found myself back in it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, look at it. Being, being a wrestler for yourself. That man, episode, and, well, if you haven't seen it, you will know why I'm back in. <laughs> yeah. All right, hey, look at it. I know, like I said, being a wrestler, man, and being away for some time, you're going to have that itch wanting to get back in and everything. But what was going through your mind trying to, you know, uh, get back in the ring and all the process and everything like that? Because obviously, biggest I know it thing takes is, a whole lot. Biggest thing is I wanted to make sure I could still keep up at that level that I did with American Prodigy, like, I mean, I was like a superhero. So, I mean, everybody looks at me now like, dang, Warren, you look you look like you could definitely have gotten back in the ring plenty of times, but it's like I had to have, you know, like how when you first came back on the podcast and you were just like, you didn't know if you still had it. And when you got in there and you started doing the reps again, and you were like, what was I worried about? I'm good. I know what I'm doing. That's kind of like how I was with wrestling. I mean, obviously for the longest time I was, I was worried about the bumps. And when I got back in there, <laughs> shout out to my buddy, uh, Logan Stevens, um, I drove out there and we trained and stuff like that. And 
it, it went from me just trying to help another kid and he tricked me into actually going in there and doing it. And when I was bumping, I mean, it felt like nothing. And I just, all right, I went to do a little bit more. I started running the ropes. Okay, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Okay, so let's go do a water under the bridge. Then I started trying to do all the old routines I did, and I got blown up because I just haven't done it in so long. And it, it made me realize, like, you know what? Maybe we can give this a try. Maybe. And I've been, don't worry, guys, I've still taken doctor visits every other week, making sure I'm good to do this. Um I'm just looking forward to it. It's I'm really excited. Next next Saturday, I'm going to be in Thomasville, Georgia, wrestling with my character again. Wrestling a guy that I basically started out with, and I never thought to the these two guys, American Project, Less Fortune, would ever have a headline match ever again. And yet alone for both of us to be coming out, and both of us are our first matches back. That's going to be an interesting thing. Hey, that's that. That sounds awesome, man. That sounds awesome. Uh, a little, way back into uh, well, L L Penguin, L Penguin. I'm definitely, definitely not done with him. <laughs> hey, look at man. You got to get a match with him, though. You got to get a match with him because he seemed like he poked at you and poked at you and poked at you almost every episode, especially the 100 episodes. And I think I got my retaliation out. back. I think I got him back on that episode because for four I months, think- he constantly was, he was pickering at everybody just back and forth. And then for the hundredth episode, I was like, you know what? I'm going to try to get him on and get him off. And he kept coming back. And I'm like, <laughs> well, like, like, <laughs> like I'm trying to swat the flag. You got to go. And he just kept coming and coming and coming. And I was like, you know what? Why not? And we planned it for the whole summer. Um, there was two dates that was guaranteed before we went back on the episode for, for the fourth season for Buzzing with Marlo. And it was poem because, I mean, it's just that's how indie promotions work, man. <laughs> they can be built up and then they're gonna drop right back down. And um we uh had something in for in mind with it, and then I found out El Nino kept canceling on it. So it was just like, what in the world? You bring me back, you do all this, and now you're canceling again. Like, what the freak is going on? So literally, that's why I showed up in McClinney at, at the Baker County Fairgrounds. At a show that he was apparently on, and I talked to shout out to the promotion DCCW. Uh, and the only thing they asked me to do was make sure I did not put my hands on him. So I think I did it well, and so apparently mm-hmm. he's still thinking I blame he's blaming me that I almost caused him a match against a guy that's basically very green. So I guess that upset him, and then I didn't hear nothing for him and for another three weeks, and then all of a sudden he pops on my episode last last week and tells me that that was a that I'm going to become a nightmare to him. So let's go. Yeah, y'all, y'all building up a story. Y'all are building let's up a go. story, though. I, <laughs> I got a question though. You say you 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 coming back and you want to go out on your uh, on your own terms. You wanted to retire at thirty. And you stopped at uh, wrestling for at the age of twenty eight for a while. Uh, how did you want to go out? What type of match is it? And you know, you know, how did you want to go out? What story do you want to tell? Um, just basically, you know, the last time I was in the ma- in a match, I did a favor for the guy that I trained with, Logan Stevens. I did a favor for him, and that's how I met Alex Kane and all those guys. Was on this on the show that we were ever in Albany, Georgia. Um, I couldn't do much. I was terrified. I was scared. Um, I went four hours, guys. Drove four hours just to get rolled up and pinned, just so I could help my buddy Logan and promote that junior heavyweight championship match that we had. And we were all in this match. Me, and this is when Alex came. This was his first year wrestling. So he's not really all out in the areas like this is like his very first time around in, in these area to go out outside of, you know, AR Fox's promotion. 
and I got to meet all these guys, met amazing guys, and it just sucked. That's the match that everybody got to see me do, and it's it's ate me alive for so long because for the longest time I thought that's that's all I could do, that's all I could give, and now I can do so much more, and I don't have to kill myself to entertain a crowd. And you hear me on you hear me banter about this on commission every other week about you you need to watch your bumps and you need to watch how the psychology wise for the crowd to get a reaction. The reaction is temporary. Your body is very temporary, very temporary. That longevity wears down. I mean, it's one tough thing. And for I just want to go out with a smile. Really, I want to go out the way I came in. Like when I say the way I came in, I want to be on my own feet. I want to be healthy and be able to say, you know what, Unless whatever, put them in the ring and do it the right way because that's okay. just something that you're trained to do, man. You, you you've been so built up for it for so long, and that's why I I joke when you say when I started hanging out with all y'all and got more attached to all these wrestling podcasts and then all this other network i had a feeling that i was going to get back in somehow some way my foot was going to be right back in the door with it i remember we were joking about it and i remember blackheart was sitting there banter he's like yeah man we're just trying to get you back in there we're trying to do it we're trying to do it and you know what el nino got it back out of me <laughs> <laughs> I dig it. I, I definitely dig it. With so many, and, and I'm I'm proud of you, my guy, for real. As a commission, bro, as a podcaster, I definitely want you uh, to do that, man. And, you know, whatever you want to do. Definitely uh, put on some size for you. <laughs> uh, but as you've seen a lot of guys such as, you know, Brian Danielson, Edge, to name a few, uh, who left the who left the wrestling business because of injuries and stuff. And you know that's the reason you stepped away. And you talked about concussions. Do anything? Do anything play? Uh, are you worried about uh, any of that, or does that play a factor <laughs> into you returning? Um, that's why I was very hesitant with when I first started like like I told you before if I got into the ring I really would have to get that mindset back to do these things and that's one thing that I'm scared about and I'm happy about at the same time like I'm getting that feel back the way I was when I first started um it is in my mind but I can't think about it constantly if I think about it too much it can really ha it can really harm me or the guy that I'm in the ring with so it's just I know I'm going to take very good care of myself I'm going to do what I need to do I'm not going to be going I'll tell you everybody now I'm not going booking to booking to booking to booking like this is going to be a set in stone I've already got an idea of how many matches I'm doing I've already got an idea of what I'm doing with this um, I'm not going to say how many matches because then I don't want to ever think oh you know you said exactly this number and then all of a sudden you change it on us so i've already got all this figured out what i'm gonna do um i'm strictly an old school wrestler so if you're expecting you know uh will osprey lucha lucha style from me this mask guy is not delivering that any type of way um I, i'm i'm just really excited that i'm gonna be able to do this and it's gonna be really a smart just a smart aspect of how i'm getting back in this ring Okay, okay. Before we move too further on, though, real quick, explain to some people who may not know, uh, you say you're an old school wrestler, though. What do you mean by that? Collar, elbow, clotheslines, um, you know, stretching the, the moves out. Make these moves. Um, say, like, when you take a clothesline, don't just pop back up instantly. Sell it like you've got, uh, got a little wind knocked out of you a little bit. You ain't got to act like you're dead. I, I, tell, I <laughs> tell new guys all the time, don't play like you're dead after a first clothesline just make it look like somebody hit you like that's the biggest problem that we have with wrestling now is you do so many moves it doesn't matter anymore like i talk about it on commission repetitively um you can't you can't even use a, a ddt as a finisher anymore like i would literally stretch out the the Sell so say like when I do a clothesline into the corner, I'm gonna go to the other corner, tell to the crowd whatever, 
boom, two. I want the crowd to rise up, that energy to rise up to when I go to hit that clothesline impact. They know I'm coming for the bulldog. They know the moves are going to be. And it makes them excited for it because it's kind of like how, you know, like when we get excited about New Year's Eve and the, the countdown for the fireworks, you know what I'm about to do. And it doesn't have to be like, you know, reversal, reversal, pin, 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 whatever. Because the guy that I'm going to be in the ring with, he knows everything I do. I know what everything he does. So it's going to be a very interesting match. Now, with me and Nino, I've only seen three matches of his. He's actually going to be able to see a newer updated match pretty soon. So we, we're we going to be able to study on some stuff. So it's just like those. It's just the psychology. And the move set wise, I'm not going to be jumping off of the top rope repetitively every single move set. Like, that's the biggest thing when I say the old school wrestler. Like, yes, I wear a mask, but I'm doing that to pay respect to all of y'all because that's what y'all remember me from. So, I mean, I broke the fifth wall a long time ago. When I first started this podcast and I said, hey, I'm American Prodigy, I broke the Fifth Amendment mm -hmm. when it comes to a mass wrestler. So, <laughs> definitely is just. An old school aspect, like you want to right. make the crowd invest in everything that you're doing. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely, I, I I agree. I definitely agree. And like you mentioned, a DDT is not a finisher no more. You know, one move that really upsets me that when guys super do kick. a power driver. I mean, yeah, super kick. I think that's so standard though. But oh, the power driver is now getting watered down move, too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we talking about a move that was so effective, a move that paralyzed certain people in the wrestling business, and we do a power driver in the middle of the match, one, two, kick out. Like, come on, man, that's a finisher. Like, it, it's just, it, it, it's, it's like, and like you mentioned also, back in the days, if you was watching a match with The Undertaker or Kane or Triple H or The Rock, those matches were at a, at a, at a, not a, at a fast pace where you saw so much uh, super kicks and this, that, and the third. You think they told stories within the matchup. And I think wrestling now uh, and with the generation, you know, that we got watching it also, they want the fast pace, the super kicks, the, 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 the drop kicks, the, the, two, the, su the suicide dives and everything like that. Mm -hmm. So, you know. Hey, look at I appreciate you. You remember you remember when uh, I showed you that match yeah, and you asked wrestling. me I remember when, you remember when I showed you that match that I did and you said, "Man, you go for that code breaker a lot." But that tells you when I hit that, that's it. That's it. Mm. Now, I could have easily hit that code breaker. Oh, one. You just killed my finisher. Period. That that's that that's not your finisher anymore. If you mm -hmm. literally instantly hit that the first part of the match and they kick out You've killed the finisher. That's period. Like the finisher is the move that you know that nobody can stop. And that's one reason why, you know, when you talked about Rock and Austin on these guys, when they did that, when they did each other's finisher, say like when the Rock did the stunner, it looked different because it wasn't it wasn't a normal thing to watch. So when Stone Cold would give the Rock a rock bottom, which it looked really weird but yeah, i can't say no i can't say no austin did not get up for rock rock dang near almost <laughs> walked on his head just to get that over but it was different it was definitely something different and that's what made you go and then when that one two oh he kicked out like that made you have that feel towards it especially with me and you i'm sure we were like no, he did not just about to hit. No, no, we are not doing this. No, no. <laughs> like, literally, yeah. like, we're watching our superhero play in this thing. So that is something that I look at when I do these matches. Like, I'm going to have to realize, you know, I don't have to play dead to get my opponent over. I don't have to kill myself to get my opponent over. I can be smart and, you know, do the moves that I know I can do. And still entertain the crowd at the same way that I used to do when I was the old AP, when I say. So there's going to be two different transitions of this guy. Like, literally, gotcha. I'm going to be, you know, athletic, clearly. I'm going to be, you know, mouthy. When I say mouthy, I'm going to get to the audience. I'm not going to beg for the audience, but I'm going to get a USA chant. And hopefully AP will 
defeat that USA chant again. We'll see. But those are the things that you need to visual when you go into the ring to do these things. And I, I tell guys constantly now, um, when I was on the DCCW show, um, a lot of guys asked me to watch their matches and look at some of the stuff that they were doing. And I remember one guy, he was trying to do like a high knee or something, like a big boot. And the guy kept kicking his knee and he wasn't really selling it. And I told him, I said, you just killed the match. He said, what do you mean? I said, if you would have acted like your leg was about to fall off of your body, when you hit that big boot, the whole crowd would have lost it. Don't even matter if you won or lost or whatever. But for you to actually get that foot up to actually pwn it to get the baby face over. That's why the crowd gets into it because they want to see an underdog story. Most of the time, nine times out of ten, a baby face is considered the underdog in the fight. One thousand percent. <laughs> I got you. I got you. I dig it. I I, I definitely dig it. I, I, I the little one. How your daughter feel about the emerging prodigy coming? Oh back my to the gosh, she's the only person who will never let me open. Never let me win. Never. Um, <laughs> it was so funny. Like when I when I first when I first had to stop doing this, I, I joked with it. I was like, man, I got out of wrestling because of concussion stuff, and my daughter beats me up ten times worse than any other guys I was in the ring. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she loves, she loves it. Um, I remember when I showed the video on social media when I when I had her in the mask, like she lit yeah. up. Those are the moments I felt, and like for her never to got to see me in that element, I'm pretty excited to let her see that. She's not gonna understand. She she's at that age where she'll be able to understand most of it, but she's not gonna understand why daddy can't say hi to her daddy can't hug her she's gonna look at me and go daddy daddy and it's just gonna be having to play it off I'm like i don't know no 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 <laughs> like you know yeah. those things but um i i'm excited like she's three um i had i did stop this also because she was a newborn and i couldn't really hold her because of, I'm, I'm hurt i'm damaged really bad like I, i'm like this like when I first had to hold mm -hmm. Bell, I'm sitting there like this. I'm scared because I can't do this while I'm holding my dot my child. Like I'm pretty sure we all have had that moment, but literally I was forced that way. I couldn't hold my neck any other way. Like that's one reason why I got scared about some stuff. And it's really just cool to know I can come back and not be so worried about everything. Like, I want to have fun. I want to enjoy this run. I'm not really putting too much pressure on myself when I do this. Like, I, I'm just doing this because I want to. And mm -hmm. I feel like I owe this to you. Um, obviously, the commission, bros, for real. Um, and the audience, for real. Like, I, that's one reason why I'm, I've really thought about doing this for a while. And plus, I'm not getting okay. any younger. <laughs> Hey, look here. I 31. Dig it, man. I, <laughs> I dig it, man. I asked that question, man, because uh, I know once, you know, my son get older, he going to definitely be trying to come in here and sit oh, with me throughout yeah. the whole episode. Just had your daughter come in and make cameos on the podcast. I, I definitely love it. Uh, but, you know. She does a lot of run-ins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I, I, I dig it. I dig it. But, uh, you know, being a parent, it is is awesome you know as i came back and we were talking about how i was like oh, well i don't know if i i don't know if i can really do it and, and that's the that's the main reason why i took a break because hell you know all the podcasting and everything to go in and all the hard work trying to uh feed them and you know spray so it was just like hey look at take a break though but as a as a dad from one day to a dad what's been like maybe one or two of the most challenging uh things that came across to you as you know being a dad or father uh, regarding with podcasting or just oh, as just, a dad uh, in just general, general. Yeah, just um dad. balance um i've had to learn you know what well, bell i mean I, I have two kids but my son i got i didn't get all the time 
because he lives with his mom eight hours away. So I'm, it's sad to say I'm, I'm mainly a first time dad when it comes to raising a three year old with Bell because I didn't get my son for a certain amount of time and I get him five times out of the year. Like my son's probably, he's 10 years old now, which is still insane to me. But the one thing that I've seen like transition wise for them is like, it's so crazy how quick they learn stuff and they depend on you for everything. When I say everything, I mean, they're looking for comfort. They're looking for, you know, needs and stuff because they can't really do anything for themselves. And I'm pretty sure you're getting that that visual now, especially even thank goodness it's just a baby stage right now. But mm-hmm. hey, when baby hungry, baby gonna eat. Like that's hey, just one of those me. things, man. Hey. Hey, <laughs> Don't care what time me. of the night. Hey. Baby hungry, <laughs> baby gonna hey. eat. Hey. Hey, look, because uh, he, he he right now with his mom right now. I'm at, I'm at home, so he, he's at her, her house right now. And she was calling me last night, and she was just like, oh, my God. It's like, I'm a little overwhelmed. And I was like, I know it could be overwhelming. And at times, though, because at times she, she want to act like super mom. And I'm like, look here, you know, you ain't got to do it all by yourself. I'm here also. Yeah. And I know it can get overwhelming because when my little man hungry, he let the whole world know. And I, I talked about it when I first came back on the podcast and it'll make you feel like so like we'd be like at her at her house so if he uh, um you know hungry break out crying or whatever her mom will come down so her mom come down and you know it's like it's more so you know to me it make me feel like uh yeah, well doing we doing job. something we, yeah we not doing our yeah. job or we may be doing something wrong you feel me like mm-hmm. it? and i got my own spot so that's why you know i tell her be like you know here is kind of like more relaxing but it's not more so to be like oh i'm trying to like i tell her multiple times take you away from you know that you yeah. know your family or whatever but it's just i feel like if you just you know it's all about this parenting thing for me i feel like help and help is always there and yeah not always it's there, okay but- it's okay to always take help and that's one thing that yes. i had to learn too is like i had a lot of pride like when i first had my son um my mom my mom is my savior for both kids um i joke about it all the time my kids would choose to live with my mom before anybody on the planet which is i'm not even kidding like when Nina is around, my kids have lost every focus to anybody. So I've I've had to learn, you know, take that pride because like how like you're going through right now, it's like we can't really do much. All we could really do is, you know, mm-hmm. be there for us. It's like when she was pregnant. Like we're not able to take that pain away from them. Like we can only just do what we're asked. Like, I mean, mm-hmm. ugh, ugh, my wife uh, when she was pregnant. It was sometimes, man. It was sometimes you just want to run away. No, but I'm just kidding, brother. Yeah. Like, seriously. <laughs> it's like, you know, you just, I've just had to learn, you know, it's okay to ask for help. It's okay to, mm-hmm. and that was one thing, like, I had to learn, you know, from my son to my daughter. Like, my daughter was yeah. very but, needy. My daughter was different okay, but, than my son on, on a lot of things. Real, real fast, ahead. real fast. Now it's, it's it's okay. Now it's okay to ask for help, but I, what's your thoughts on when maybe so? Like I was just saying, you know, like if if you know if her mom come down there and and, and make us feel more so like we're not doing our job or we're not doing yeah, it yeah, right. Yeah. So you know what, what what you say on that? And you know I don't mind help. I don't mind help. I don't know at all. You know I'm a first time dad. Mm-hmm. So I mean, just say it like this. You asked. They say no, you done your part. Like that's how I've seen it. Like you at least tried. That's one thing I I've I've had to realize too because you know with my wife and stuff like that, she did want to. She wanted my daughter around her a lot, obviously because she, I can't give it to her. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it, it might be a little hairy down there. You don't want that, you know. <laughs> but like it's um. I've, I've just got to, I had to learn, you know, even though I can't do those things, like I could still help out with something. And I had that time plenty of times, man, especially with 
I mean, rest in peace. Um, her dad passed just recently passing, but um, that's something that we hit L heads a lot of times too, was because he felt like, you know, Hey, I'm not, not able to do much around. Cause I was like, I was working, doing what I need to do, get whatever I can. Hey, you know, the baby didn't want to do breastfeeding anymore. Okay. Now we got our formula. So obviously that's going to be more me. Now I can do stuff on. And I mean, it was just, mm -hmm. you just got to learn to it's a, as long as you ask, even though if they say no, still be around, still kind of like, you know, try to do as what you can do your part. And it, it does pay off because like, you know, my son was attached to me when he was a baby, completely attached to me. He got older. She got right over to team daddy and nobody was taking her away from anything unless Nina came over. But it's just those, those little trial and error periods. Like it's no such thing as a wrong way to be a parent. And there's no such thing as the perfect way of being a parent. It's just a matter of how you do your routines and stuff. And I remember seeing a couple of your episodes where you you were talking about a lot of people were giving you uh, crap about, you know, about sleeping. I agree with mm -hmm. you. I agree with you. As long as the baby is, you know, healthy, sleeping the right way, whatever it's doing, what's wrong? Yeah. Do you want us to be yeah, miserably yeah. still super tired if they're <laughs> sleeping? Like, what's what's the problem with this? Like, that is something like I've had to learn. You know, people. Are, and I mean, we learn this with just doing this outlet. Now, there's always going to be a negative comment. It doesn't matter if positive, how energetic you can be. You're always going to get that one negative comment. And I've I've had this since I was a baby of myself. So. I, I laugh at it now. It doesn't affect me in any way, but I know, you know, as a first time parent, it can definitely be a frightening thing. And I remember when I first had my son, like I thought I was going to be the worst dad on the planet because I didn't know nothing about no babies. I mean, when we did the mommy and me class, I just tried to joke around and stuff because most of the people look so nervous to play with the, you know, the little prosthetic baby you know when you had to wear the stupid little belly thing and and it was just like i'd be funny with it because i mean it's, it's gonna be a nerve-wracking thing but it was like it's not the real thing right now so i mean yeah play with it but i've learned patience for sure definitely patience is not on your time that is one thing i had to learn especially mm -hmm. the podcasting standpoint when i started with you know when bell I mean, now it's three, and we've been for over three years now. Um, I've just had to learn, you know, when she's put down or whatever, I can go and do my little thing. I can do my thing. So it's yeah. just like, you know, you got to do the prioritized thing. Like, it's okay to, you know, let your significant other do what she, she wants to do. Obviously, the stuff that she can do. But there's also... As long as you are around and it doesn't make her seem like she's just literally the long lost werewolf that literally can't do nothing, then you're doing your job. Hey, I dig it. I, I definitely dig it, man. Yeah. Oh, uh, man. I, I promise you guys they don't talk pro wrestling. We're going to get to some wrestling topics, though. <laughs> but yeah, uh, that whole situation was just like uh, really weird. It was like, uh, yeah, you know, if he's sleeping in there, don't let him, you know. And it was like, I had uh, that same problem. I'm sleep, you know, he sleep. We both gonna be sleep, you know. And I think it was just. Does he sleep in like everything. a bassinet near y'all? Does he sleep yeah, in yeah, the he crib sleep, or a yeah, bassinet? He in a, yeah, he, a bassinet. He slept in the bassinet, and, he, and that's what he do. He sleep in the bassinet. Um, you know, sometimes you know uh, his mother, uh, you know, hold him or whatnot. But majority of times he sleep in the back, you know, the bassinet. And I think it was so much emotions going on and everything at one time. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But I felt like, you know. It's your first kid. Man. I don't know. It's your yeah, first kid. Yeah. The kid is breathing every single day. You're doing your job. Yeah. Yeah. You got that right. You got that right. Hey, you guys, man, we're going to take a real quick, quick, quick commercial break, you guys. And we're going to get into some wrestling topics right after this, man. For real. Don't move. You're listening and you're watching. Tonight's the nice podcast. To Talk pro wrestling. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man.
Yo, we back here on Talk Pro Wrestling. Appreciate everyone sticking with me throughout the short break, man. Got my awesome guest here. One third of this, man. Not two of myself, man. My guy, Juan Marlo, host of Buzzin' I'm, with Marlo. I'm the honorary oh, Oost, man. I'm the honorary. <laughs> Yeet, yeet, yeet. Hey, yo, you, you had me <laughs> laughing, man. <laughs> you had me laughing. I said, not the yeet, yeet, though, man, though. <laughs> I dig it. I dig it, though. But we're going to get into some wrestling topics, man, here on the podcast. And since we are both, both huge, huge Rock fans, we got to start it off, man, with uh, The Rock's daughter, Ava. Yes, she's the new member of Schism of the NXT uh, group faction. Um, I, I got to hear your thoughts because it seemed like half of the crowd, when they saw her get unveiled uh, on Tuesday night, half of them knew them because I went on her Instagram page and I seen she's been, you know, working around the old Florida area, trying to, yes. you know, get some reps and, you know, get everything going on. But yeah, boom, there she go. The Rock's daughter made her debut. I was so confused. I was like, I don't know if this is her. I look like her. I had to Google her real quick. And boom, yeah, that's the first her. thing. No more. I really did. I had to Google her and I was like, was that her? And I was like, yeah, man, it's her. What's your you thoughts, see man? that face? You can't <laughs> deny it. You can't deny it. <laughs> you can't. You really can't. It's all in her that's face. That's that Rocky Maya Via face right there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, man. What's your thoughts on uh, the eyes, man? Actually, no, she looks. She I mean, she looks like her mom, but her eyes right there, that that, that would have been it for me. She got the, the rock eyes. face a little bit, but she looked definitely like her mom. Yeah. I, I, I'm happy for it. Um, I think it's been a long overdue thing. I did not expect her to be with Joe Gacy in there. Um, but she's always been in type of that background and stuff like that. Obviously, she's been in NXT for a long time because if y'all don't remember, y'all remember the um, the little video scene that vignette that Rock did for um, talking about the performance center, and he popped in and saw his daughter wrestling and gave her gave some uh, ring general advice. Um, but I think this is a good thing for him. We know that she was wrestling on Florida shows, the the house shows for a little bit for the NXT. But she's been there for a while, so I'm glad that they're finally doing something. And I liked how they presented her. I think it was yeah. different. The nose ring is definitely something I w I'm pretty sure Rock did not like at first. But hey, maybe the character. I don't know. But it's good. Um, I I rem I just recently watched it, and I saw that the crowd was screaming pebbles. Yeah, yeah, they were. <laughs> oh man! I when I like I said when I first saw it, I was completely hey, blown off. That just means and, that means that storyline's coming more and more for us now. It, it is. That's a, it is it, that Survivor Series glitch that we had a long time ago. That <laughs> that damn egg. Oh, hopefully we might get something really. I'm gonna come out of the egg next time. You're gonna be the godly <laughs> dude. Hopefully, hopefully he don't come out of it. Hopefully he don't come out of an egg though, but. Hopefully, uh, maybe in a year or two or whatever, <laughs> when she gets to the like the main roster or so, we know that The Rock is going to kind of like give her, you know, some type of rub or whatever. But um, I why like fans I said, were getting upset about it? I, I don't know why yeah. fans were getting mad about her being on NXT. Why not get her something to get herself on these TV screens and stuff like yeah. that? It's something to start her out. Yeah, I don't think it'd be no. smart to just really put her out there on Raw or SmackDown, even though she's The Rock's daughter. She's been her... there for a while, but still, it's just yeah. not. It's a different yeah. game. That's a different game. You got to realize that we've we've realized this for a long time. The NXT audience is so different from the actual WWE basic fan audience. And I think that's the craziest thing now. It's like this. They're both together now like mm. how how much have we realized we talk more about wwe in a positive way recently than we have in the last 10 years mm -hmm. yeah and i think that's because of uh, triple h taking over and sort of making things more interesting though but uh like I said, uh, Eva, uh, Ava's debut. I'm, I'm, I'm interested. I'm just curious what, what they're gonna do. I'm yes, curious. Definitely, definitely. The little mask thing. 
I yeah, didn't she's the first fourth generation of superstars. So I said, yep. out of everybody in that whole Attitude Era, I mean, The Undertaker had a son. You know, obviously Ric Flair had a son, but he passed away. But you got Charlotte here in the business. But not too many of, uh, you know, kids. Both from of Rick's that. sons were wrestlers. Yeah, yeah, they were. They were. And you know, I feel like maybe this is, you know, this is the moment for Ava to, uh, to shine. So. Definitely want to see where it goes next, man. This definitely was definitely career. her choice. This was yeah. nobody else's choice. She wanted to do this. She okay. just asked Daddy how to get her in. That's that's all she did. Hey, I love it, man. Like I say, I was a huge rock fan, so definitely I got my eyes on her, and I'm gonna definitely support and see where see it goes. She does man. the rock bottom. <laughs> yeah, that'd be dope. That'd be dope. Speaking of dope, man, uh, the pebble bottom. <laughs> uh and also seeing where it goes to uh obviously Bray Wyatt made his huge return and everything like that. But it's something cool or creepy or whatever we seen on uh SmackDown uh last Friday. I think it, we, we saw Uncle Howdy. I'm I'm not sure. He, 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 what, what did we see? I think it is Uncle Howdy. <laughs> you know, because he, he put his hat in Howdy. You know, I guess this is one of Bray's six, uh, yep. six characters that he got in mind. I think this is just a personality trait with him, and I think it's going to be. I loved the, how they did the promo where he came out and showed his real feelings and stuff like that. Mm. That even made it to like. It, I, I know a lot of people were upset about it, but I was like, you do not realize how much more that made his character look so much stronger. Like, you don't know which phase that he's going to be in. Like, you don't know if that was even, like, one of the characters right now. Like, I remember when we first thought about it, I was even on the I was even on the train, and I'm thinking, oh, he's bringing a faction. Um, I, I really want to see where this can go, because, you know, where he said he's he's – untouchable and he can go anywhere that he wants to go so mm -hmm. how about if all these guys go to different brands that would be cool to see oh wow and it's a partial thing of bray like bray's on smackdown bray's on raw bray's on nxt like it's it's a different type of transition type thing so i think this is a really cool thing and i said it from day one and you you were on my back you know i said this when they signed that Marvel writer, I knew something was going to have to be entailed that they had to sign Bray. Because the way that he, they do in this stuff right now, I'm just like, yes, this is perfect. The little vignettes, he doesn't have to be on the TV every single week. I mean, actually visually on the show. But these little vignettes, it's just going to make you keep questioning. You're going to keep watching just to see what's going on. Hmm. Hey man, I'm 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 interested and I'm I'm tuned in to SmackDown to see you know what's next. We we seen Howdy and obviously the Fiend and some of these other characters that you know he's already are. Uh, the, I think the 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 character that I'm most interested in, uh, I mean not this guy just yet, uh, <laughs> uh, but the character of Bray Wyatt that I'm most likely uh, interested in is the sort of the original Bray Wyatt from NXT. Uh, when he came husky. out with the Wyatt family, yeah. Well, yeah, that was that was no, in the not Nexus, husky, husky. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, was yeah. that was in uh, the Nexus though. But when he came up with uh, Eric Rowan and and Luke Harper, mm -hmm. and I thought that Bray, especially when it, when he went up against John Cena, and then I think he went up against the Undertaker that following year. You know, especially this stuff with the Undertaker was just amazing. And I talked about this uh before i think of so many of the legendary guys such as the undertaker and also john cena as sort of gone and not here on a regularly regular basis i think bray wyatt is a guy that you can move forward with especially to be an attraction as a character to, oh yeah yes. as, a, as a character yes. and definitely as an attraction yes to uh appear obviously we know we got brock lesnar he shows up boom that's that's brock brock is brock but i think you know, uh uh bray wyatt could be that phenomenon that you you know that boom at wrestlemania you know, because now all we know that at wrestlemania we may just get it Two nights a year now. We don't really know. Like a, a couple of years ago, we knew that at WrestleMania, if I buy a ticket, 
I'm going to see the Undertaker defend his streak. You know, I'm going to see X, Y, Z. I'm going the to whole see eight hours. This. Yeah, you know, like I, I think Great Y is he's back and he can be that. You know that that. Oh yeah, that and guy he doesn't that have guy to do that. much. He doesn't have right. to do much. Right. And and people might get mad, man. Bray is a mid when it regards wrestling talent. That's probably why it was very like. A lot of people are like, should we pay the top dollar for his performance standpoint? But as a character wise, Bray is untouchable. Mm-hmm. And I have said mm-hmm. it numerous times. Bray is the Undertaker now, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Like he has this character so evolved. It's not really like you know which one to do anymore. Like he's got so many different options. So say like if say like you know. Like how Taker did. Taker adapted from being, you know, the phenom to being the American badass. Got evolved into the group being, you know, riding a motorcycle, wearing, you know, my motorcycle gear, but still wearing black stuff. But hey, showing a different, a different visual of Undertaker and kept adapting every single year. I feel like that's what's going on with Bray. Bray's gonna have at least 30 gimmicks before before they're all said and done. Like, honestly, and he could do any little part of it, and it makes something monumental. It can make something really impactful. Like how you just said about Brock Lesnar. When Brock Lesnar shows up, the building's going to lose the lose its crap, regardless of what the outcome is. Even if it's mm-hmm. mad that they that he saw a suplex 50 times, you just saw Brock Lesnar. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's how we're going to be with Bray Wyatt now. Yeah, definitely, definitely, man. So interested to see what goes on on, uh, on on SmackDown. Obviously, Roman Reigns, you know, he comes back to get mad at his uh, his bloodline for Jay Uso, kind of like disobeying him and taking out Sheamus. Uh, see what's up with that. With uh, ahead of Roman Reigns matchup against Logan Paul next week here on Talk Pro Wrestling, we're gonna review and break down uh, the matches from Crown Jewel and Ronda Rousey Open Challenge a little bit. Um, a little bit of everything coming up on SmackDown, but we're going to move on. A guy who I just shown uh, here uh, spoiler. on the screen, you guys. <laughs> spoiler. Uh, MJF, you guys. Uh, I got to ask the question, and I'm going to keep the conversation sort of, sort of going on. You knew it was on. coming. You knew <laughs> uh, it. I think it, it was too soon. It, it, and also, we talked about it, too, on uh, Commission Talk, but I got to ask the question. Is MJF uh aew's savior and also is, is they making the right move by having them go baby face you know we seen what happened Ooh. wednesday night for him not you know we seen what happened on wednesday night john moxley getting attacked by uh the, the group that sort of helped him win the uh mm-hmm. casino chip and he was reluctant to go help but he went in there and uh, they attacked mjf so it seems though, you know, we may be getting a little bit of a baby face MJF. Um, is this a good thing, you know, or or a bad thing, you know? Mm. Man, you gonna give the guy that everybody considers as anti AW. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> the thing about MJF, um, I think. I think he's starting to be even more shocked to see how the crowd's been reacting for him right now. So you think so? I still think I I I don't understand the firm ordeal because it was too early already, but the way you brought him back, you brought him as a group, and literally not even in two months span, the group is already turning on MJF. I think I think um I want you to keep that. I want you to keep that thought real quick and, and, and finish it. But I just, I, I want to say, I, I mean, I personally didn't like group at all. I, I felt like the ass boy should have stayed wherever they were at. Um, <laughs> Leo, Lee, 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 Lee Morati, like great talent. I hope I'm not saying his name wrong, which I'm pretty sure y'all. Yeah, that's uh, right. Great you, talent. That's right. Green hair Moriarty. is. Yeah, the green hair is okay, but great talent. Love to see what he can um, do on his own. Uh uh, Ethan Page. Um, I'm pretty. I think uh, Scorpio Sky is injured right now or something. Mm-hmm. So okay. So I, I want to see Ethan Page do something great also. But I think the only person, in my opinion, that 
he should have had is his as a uh, Will uh, Big Cass, you know W. Yeah. Morrissey. He should have had yep. him. He's tall, big, you know. Like, come on, we we all know as you know, seen him before, and I think he should have been the only person, and that could have way of building up um, another person. I don't want to jump yep. in here, I and mean, I know we on MJF, but another guy who uh, would whose success came up off of MJF was Warlow after. Yep. Uh, after the whole thing, and I want to say double, double or nothing, Warlow just fell flat. Like I feel like he could have been the guy who could have been up in the ladder, who could could be a contender. And I'm not mm-hmm. saying well, it's too soon or it's not too soon, but I feel like Warlow was another guy. But back to MJF though. Um, yeah, uh, Morrissey <laughs> does benefit from MJF. I, yes. I agree with you on that. Um, mm-hmm. The first group that reminds me with those two would have been Kevin Nash and Shawn Michaels. Literally, like MJF, that mouthy, you know, spit in the face, bad guy. And then you got the muscle, so you can obviously be the spit mouth bad guy because you don't have to do anything. You got this big old muscle head behind you to do all the work for you. So the only thing I'll say, I thought I was happy that Ethan Page got something that could benefit him. But why is he's always in a faction? I don't understand that part. Um, what you refer to the ass boys, um, <laughs> Austin and uh, his his brother. Um, I think it helped them a little bit just to get them more, see how more ready they can be on a main, a bigger storyline process. I still just don't understand why they did it so early with them. Like, give it to a meeting where, you know, MJF was a part of this leading thing. Because we started seeing this a long time ago when MJF first came back. MJF wasn't really with the firm, literally, right after the first week. So, literally, they're they're probably just like, hey, man, what's up? So, I think this is going to tell the story for that match between him and Moxley now. Because now, I... I don't know. I think it might turn it and they might switch and, you know, do like the old stone cold turn, like how they do with with the rock, which still haunts me to this day. Um, Literally that WrestleMania 17 was traumatizing for me, man. I'm just saying, I'm pretty sure you, you know where I'm going with this. You know, we probably both shared a couple of tears that night. And then obviously the next night in the steel cage where, I feel like that's might might be a case, you know, maybe kind of like teasing, like, hey, MJF might be fully on his own, make somebody believe in him, boom. Obviously, he's that shady guy in the background, kind of like like a double turn. But I, I still cannot just see him as a full on baby face. But right. crowd right. loves him. The crowd yeah, loves of him. Course. Right now. I, yeah, the crowd love him, I think, because his personality. They're going to love him regardless. Character. Yes, they are going low regardless. I think, in my personal opinion, though, I feel like Keep if it. everything is going on, yeah, I, yeah, and, and I think it's an idea. It's also a way of like, let's just try it because they don't have make sure you stand, else. make sure your company stand out because your number one guy is a heel yeah. transition into a baby face. He's in between, but the crowd just won't hate him. That is the that is something that you don't see in wrestling companies nowadays. Mm-hmm. Roman, Roman, great example. People yeah. have thought Roman has been a heel since he since we got him at that one WrestleMania. When I'm sorry, it's, if you cannot get the Rock <laughs> to get you over, you have no chance of getting this audience with you. And what yeah. had to happen? Roman had to freaking announce he had cancer. For fans to even care about this guy. Like, Mm -hmm. then you go, he comes back, gets that major pop back, and then it's already watered down again. Then comes back as this bad mouth heel. People can't get enough of him. (laughs) Oh, man. Uh, Real fans, though, with the whole MJF thing, I think with the crowd love him so much, they just want to go ahead and probably turn him babyface. I just want to see how it goes. I personally it like hurt. him as a heel a little. It might hurt I think it. I, I like him as a heel more personally. But what you just mentioned, though, with the whole Roman Reigns and stuff. Now, I don't know if I might be the bad guy for everyone who's listening and watching uh, for, for this, though. But I remember that night Joe came out there and said, yo, I'm battling leukemia. I got leukemia. And 
what my buddy looked at me and was like, really though? Like that'd be like y'all like messed up if it was though. But we seen how corrupt Vince McMahon is though. But this was just me and my. This would have killed him. This like, would have tear. This would have tear WWE I, to shreds. I felt. If that was I felt fake. like Vince McMahon used it the leukemia to get Roman Reigns over. They tried so much. So I know it's weird. I know. I we all like thought that they, for a long time. Even uh, I I'm know. not even gonna lie. I, I had to. Uh, I, I had a bad argument with a lot of guys on the indies when we were regarding this subject, but you know, you know, with Roman smoking and you know he couldn't pass his drug test and stuff, it kind of made sense. Like there was stuff that was going on. Like he's doing this to help us with this cancer, and mm -hmm. you don't have yeah. to have hair loss to be having cancer. And that's one thing mm -hmm. that people were like, "Well, he's got a head full of hair." You yeah. literally yeah. can still have hair and not and have cancer. Like and look for th these things, that was man. Just, yeah, and look at that was just my uh, oh yeah oh I trust you. We, we were all because, on that idea. Yeah, because I I knew Vince McMahon and what he does. He will take something that uh, may be going on in your real life and bring it onto screen and stuff or play it, with it. That one know? affected Vince a different way, and nobody yeah, really knows know. like. Vince really got affected about Roman, and Vince did not want Roman to do it. Roman yeah. did this. Mm -hmm. This was Roman's call to go out there and tell you, hey, I got to take time off. I'm in remission. I have to literally – I got to fight this. I'm, I am I beat Brock Lesnar, and now I got to go beat leukemia. The the like, pop that he – like you mentioned, the pop that he got when he came back, that was amazing, though. You know, and then he was in. Re 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 that was the first like time that. wrestling fans had a heart. Yeah, I know, I know. But then, look, that was just my theory for everyone. You know, when it first happened, and I said to my buddy, he scratched his head, was like, "You really think Vince that dirty?" I was like, "I don't know, though. I mean, they've been trying so much. Even Vince McMahon got into the storyline, woofed them to try to get him so over. He beat the Undertaker the next night. They booed the hell out of him. It was oh just every gosh. single. They even brought the Rock out there." In the rumble, where that Roman part Reigns still won, drove so me. I've it, never you seen Rock like, get booed. Never get they, booed. And they tried he everything. Was booed out of the building because of Roman. And I feel like when Roman Reigns took that time off for of that year or whatever throughout the whole COVID, and, and he took some time off to talk to the Rock. I know he did. He had to, oh, yeah. as far as his mentality to come back as the head of the table. And the blood why we're like, about to get what we're we're what we've been on. waiting for for a long time. <laughs> I feel like that is one reason why. And mm -hmm. and I think and and there's another thing why a lot of people question it too because you know Roman was on Hobbs and Shaw, so mm -hmm. everybody's like, oh, you got leukemia, but you're doing movies. Roman didn't do a lot of scenes. And it was it was Rock's call because Rock wanted to you know hey, I guarantee y'all guys if, if Rock had a disease or something we ain't we we're all gonna be the last person to find out about it because Rock is still just going to do his job that is just something that he's been built in to do and I think with Roman I think Rock did stuff to really get Roman to do I really think if it wasn't for Rock Rock put Roman back into wrestling. Because honestly, because you could just tell from that promo that Roman really was defeated. Like, yeah. I know, you know, with me being in wrestling and stuff in it, as much as I love pro wrestling, as much as I've done it for so long, I question everything that's on TV because of my mindset of pro wrestling. Um, I literally was... I looked at Roman's face and I was like, this is not a work. Mm -hmm. Not at all. Like he's doing this way too well to sit there and fake this. Like there's no smirk. There's no you know, fake tears. Like this is legit him. Mm -hmm. And yeah, <clears throat> it sucked. It really did suck because that's really the only time the crowd really cared for him until he went to this, the tribal chief. Which is still yeah. insane okay. to me. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad he's doing, you know, doing wonderful now. And he's the head of the table, of course, over 700 days as champion. Missionary We're does gonna, that. Yeah, 
I dig it. I dig it. You heard it from Warren first, man. For real. We're going to move on from that one, you guys. Uh, uh, what, what's your thoughts on this duo right here on Monday Night Raw? The team of JBL and the newly wrestling god, Ben Corbin. Wrestling god. All right. Yeah. First of all, man, I've said this from day one. Baron did remind me of John Bradshaw Layfield. And I, when you did the homeless Corbin, the unhappy Corbin and stuff, and I was just like, yeah, something, something's adding up to this. But did I ever see JBL coming back to be a manager? No, but I'm happy about it. I think this is well, – Corbin gets heat regardless. That's one thing. Corbin has no problem of somebody hating this guy. I mean, it's insane. Corbin can smile at somebody and you want to punch him in the face, but you're scared mm-hmm. to because this dude's like seven foot tall. But yeah. with JBL added in with this, I think it's a great, great thing. And you might see Corbin holding them, might get into a big picture soon. This might help him. I definitely, I definitely can see this helping Corbin. The only thing about this, though. I'm a fan of Baron Corbin, though. I really am, though. I just think that he's the a good heel. Music, he's a good yeah, bad guy. He, he, he really is. I just think the music and stuff and him coming out there acting so, I guess, happy, you know, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. But I'm definitely loving it. Love to see where it goes. Fan of JBL and stuff. Parachute pants. I loved it. Yeah. Yeah. Them pants he should have not wore on uh, Monday Night Raw. Okay. Uh, from that one real fast to a, another topic. And I got to ask your opinion on because this is Monday Night on Raw. We've seen a whole lot of Johnny <laughs> Russell Johnny Gargano. But I got to ask, what is the Miz Big secret. What do you think his big secret is that he got going on with Dexter oh, yeah. Lewis? Um, I don't know. I think I think Miz probably told Loomis, "Hey, man, you can be with us or something like that." I don't. I really don't know. <laughs> but I think, it, bro, like I said this, and a lot of people were upset about how the storyline was going with Dexter and Miz, and I thought. You know, after Dexter beats Miz, that's probably it. No, like this is kind of making a very compelling thing where you want to tune into Raw to find out, hey, is Miz going to tell us the secret? I thought it was funny as hell that truth came out and it's like, you wanted the truth, right? Oh, <laughs> like, <my goodness. laughs> I mean, I liked it. And I think Johnny Gargano's having fun with this thing too. Like, you know, Johnny used to think these things are pretty dumb, but I mean, Look at what stuff that Johnny did with the way, like some of the most obnoxious stuff going on, but it was some of the most fun things that you saw in NXT and Miz. And it's still crazy to me how Miz can have a reality show and people still hate him, but still love him at the same time. That is how good Miz is. And I think Miz just probably told Dexter, you know, Hey, I would, I want to put you with us or whatever. We can be tag team champs or something. I I don't know necessarily with that, but I still don't understand how Dexter's a baby face and he's a stalker. But hey, people are praising Jeffrey Dahmer and every other thing that's going on in the world. So I guess so. I guess so. You hit that on the nail right there because I was definitely talking about that on the main podcast though. But uh, I I, I think that's the me. (laughs) <laughs> it really is. It really is. I think Dexter Loomis, uh, I think maybe he um, he did something frighten the Miz or something to where it's like, hey, if you say this or do this, then uh, oh, I, I don't you. know. <laughs> yeah, I, I really don't. And then you add Johnny Gargano in the mix to be like. I love the know, whistle. I love the whistle. That's great. I blow the whistle, and I mean, the crowd was getting into it. That's when you know you're doing something right. And I don't care if it's not even entertaining the TV audience. If you're entertaining the audience that is around you, which you got to think, man, a lot of us have been to a WWE event. It's very quiet until some ring. You hear the promos. You hear the guys bumping in the ring, but you don't hear anything else around it. So when Johnny had that whistle in his mouth, and the crowd's popping like they just heard Brock Lesnar's entrance song, that's when you know that this is starting to be an entertaining aspect. Like, it's something cool to do. And I 
I don't know. I think it's just a, one of those little funny skits, and it's a cool little storyline that people are going to tune in. Even if it's obnoxious and crazy, it's still something that people will watch. Yeah, it, it is. We'll find uh, out what Miz's secret is later. <laughs> it might be on yeah. his reality show. We never know. <laughs> I think he may reveal it. And then with Halloween coming up, too, I think he's going to reveal it maybe this coming Monday night. Obviously, that's what uh, John said. If you don't He's reveal it, I'm going to... <laughs> I'm blow the whistle louder, you know, <laughs> you know. Uh, but yeah, our truth man, he is hilarious. He did the same thing on Tuesday night. Also, truth came out there. Truth he, water, man. You know, he, he yeah. was like, bro, like, really? I, I dog it, one man. one at home. I love it. <laughs> oh man, in the Yo, Hornets you- jersey. <laughs> <laughs> Truth is amazing, man. It's amazing. Yo, I appreciate you coming through here on the podcast. We got an episode coming out uh, later on today, 5 p.m. Live, man. For real, tell everyone about it and where they can catch in at it. Yeah, man. You can catch it on Facebook, on Twitch, Twitter, and obviously on our YouTube page. I'm pretty sure the link will be below. Um, it's going to be with Courtland Tyler, uh, game designer and anime cre- creator. Uh, he was on last season, and he was – talking about the game that was really in the process he just got the license and he was talking about designs and stuff now this time he's got it more developed we actually got a video scene of what the game is about to bring out and stuff like that so if you're very interesting i know crazy thing about world now is video games have been a very big hell you can get a job now at home playing video games um that is the insane part but literally if you are a very good fan a fan of video gaming uh if you're curious about how to do a video game design highly when you check out this episode we we shoot the breeze it has a lot of fun uh he's actually a re- fan of wrestling too he, he he that's how he wanted to talk about some things too but definitely a, a cool episode talk about video games his animes and stuff like that and obviously guys from last week's episode people have been constantly messaging me going hey man uh do you think that was real and stuff like that um from the last episode i had uh eleanor wagner she's a lady ghostbuster um she does ghost encounters and it was definitely a different episode so definitely it's been some crazy things and it was the halloween time and also guys happy halloween um it's it's gonna be an awesome I'm looking forward to it and a big announcement we just got it yesterday we are officially now on Apple products so that has been a huge accomplishment for me because if anybody knows how to do a podcast how freaking hard it is to get on Apple and when you're on Apple you're everywhere so definitely is awesome to check us out on those and definitely enjoy it and give us a like and comment and get you a nice little hat as well What's up? That is what's up. Yeah, the link's gonna be down below for uh buzzing with Marlo. Go check it out. Go tap into the latest episode and everything, man. For real, get you some merch, man. For real, uh, man, this has been a great episode. I appreciate you going always. A dope I'm time. better than Shiz. I you. just want to say that I'm always. I'm, <laughs> I, I beat Blackheart's record. I want him in this <laughs> thing, and I guarantee he's gonna be mad when I say that. I guarantee it. <laughs> You you hear you hear Black Heart man, uh, man yeah but this was definitely dope man I'm excited for you to get back into the ring man that's going to be great yeah. great father chat also and great wrestling chat also uh hope everyone enjoy wrestling this week enjoy your weekend and all that a new episode of the 11:30 podcast uh, from the main show is out right now go tap in check that out. Uh, tell me what you like about it. It's available on Spotify if you want to listen on the go. And also, a new episode will be dropping this Wednesday, you guys, for real. New episode uh, of November, man. We're getting into November. My birthday yeah. coming up. We're approaching the three-year anniversary of the 1130 podcast. It's some great stuff, man, for real. But I'm not going to keep rambling on, man. It's been a great one. Enjoy the rest of you guys. Friday in your weekend for myself. For Warren Marlowe, stay blessed, stay safe, man. Get all glory to God, man. Won't he do it? Yo, it's your man Dre, a.k.a. Dre on Well Show, and I'm out. <laughs>